This is Porto and it predates to the Romans with evidence of early Celtic and pre-Celtic settlements. Porto is the only city in Europe with six bridges. At a time, Louis I bridge was the longest metal arc bridge in the world. Surprisingly, Porto briefly had a seventh bridge. You can still see the remains today. We decided to take a river cruise to see the bridges in more detail and get more information on them. Rudolf Eiffel designed the Maria Pier Bridge as well as the Eiffel Tower. We visited the world of wine, which was truly wow. We learned all about chocolate, wine and of course port. In one of these experiences we learnt how to make port. Around mid-September grapes are picked by hand. Port is made from a range of traditional grape varieties. Then the grapes are taken to the winery, inspected on a sorting table before being destemmed. Then the grapes are placed in thigh deep granite treading tanks, lagers, <laughs> then trodden by foot. Treading. The first stage of treading is called cut or cut and involves crushing the grapes, which at this stage are still relatively solid, to release the dupe and pulp from their skins. During this initial stage, the treaders link up in a tight line and advance very slowly, shoulder to shoulder. When the court has been completed, the second stage begins. This is called Liberdade or Liberty. The treaders now work individually, moving freely around the lager, ensuring that the grape skins are kept submerged under the surface of wine. After a few hours, the ferme fermentation begins and the heat and alcohol it produces begins to release the colour, tannins and aromas from the skins, allowing them to be diluted in the fermenting wine. The treading is sometimes supplemented by the use of long wooden plungers called makos, used to punch the skins down under the surface of the wine. When about half of the natural sugar of the grape juice has been turned into alcohol by the fermentation, the winemaker gives a signal for fortification process to start. Treading stops and the skins are allowed to rise to the surface of the lager where they form a solid layer. The wine fermenting under this cap of skins is then run out of the lager into a vat. As the fermenting wine pours into a vat, a very clean young wine brandy is added to it. This colourless neutral spirit at a strength of 77% alcohol is usually added into a ratio of about 115 litres of brandy to 435 litres. The quality of the brandy is very important. As the wine ages, the spirit and the wine will combine in a magical synergy which will contribute to the subtle complexity of the mature port. After the harvest, the, the wine remains at the winery in Dora Valley where it is left to settle until the spring of the following year before being taken into the firm's lodges at Villanova de Giana near the Atlantic coast to be matured, blended and bottled. But wine is not the only thing that we learnt about, we also learnt about chocolate too. That was fun. Here's a video on how they harvest the cacao beans. The workers make sure they pick every cacao bean to make sure none are left behind. Then they use a machete to open each cacao bean. All of the insides are then put into a pot. They transport the insides to be made into chocolate. We finished off with the tour of the factory and had our own personalised chocolate. recommend going to Porto.